Dexter. Yep, episode seven, which is called <laughs> uh, Skin of. Oh yeah, Skin of Her Teeth. Skin of Her Teeth. Skin of Her Teeth. Skin of her teeth. And this, of course, is in reference to Iris, because in the opening here, we get Dexter doing what he used to do second best. I think he's a better serial killer or forensics guy. Um, I think he's a good forensics guy because he's a good serial killer. So I guess he's a better serial killer. I'm going to say it's the opposite. You think he's a better for, he's a better serial killer because he's a better, because he's a good forensics guy? Yeah. Hmm. He's good at being a serial killer because he understands forensics really well, right? You start you start researching all the things that could get you caught, yeah. which makes you better, you know, at, not better at not caught. getting caught. Yeah. Sure. Um, this is closing in like oh. two seconds, so that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> I have to keep touching it. What do you have I on I have there? it turned on, so I think it's just because it's on like power saving mode probably. Mm, no, it's not. What it said. Oh, maybe it does. Yeah, I don't know how to turn that off. Uh, turn off l- power, power save <laughs> mode. <laughs> yeah, there it there is. Yeah. Perfect. I got it. All right. <laughs> so we figure out that Iris was shot in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, which we get confirmation in this that Kurt did it because he lies to the cops. But yep. we see what actually happens, which I actually quite um appreciated, as opposed to the whole showing us their lie like personified into Mm -hmm. you know making it into um you know bringing it into fruition Mm -hmm. um to trick us or to show us it and then it's like no that's not what actually happened here's what actually happened they kind of like get past that all in one go it's like you hear his lie but then you see the actual truth playing out during his lie Mm -hmm. which i quite preferred i didn't want them to be like Oh, well, here's what actually happened. Yeah, I like that they incorporated it into the scene already. Yeah. So we get the skin in the teeth here, Mm -hmm. which is 25 years old. And they get a like 67% match Mm -hmm. that it is probably him, to which he says it is his father. Now, I'm assuming his father's dead, right? Do they say outright his father's dead at this point? I don't remember if they've outright, but it would make sense. I mean, he's like 60-something, his yeah. father most likely. My dad's 63 and his dad's still alive. But it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, more yeah. likely he's dead. Yeah, I think right. he's dead. Yeah, it wouldn't really, I mean. It doesn't really it, matter. It, it does matter because well, they go does. after him, right? Yeah, you're right. So he so. probably is dead. But. Yes. They probably said it. We just missed it. That's mm. fine. Um... So, I like that she, like, immediately suspects Kurt and Mm -hmm. tells Dexter. I mean, we already knew she suspected him. That's why she's there in the fucking first place. Mm -hmm. But she let Dexter in on it. So, she does trust him to some degree. Because if she didn't, why would she be revealing very sensitive information like Mm -hmm. that to something that is so greatly important to her? When she's interrogating him, she kind of loses it. Right? And she has to even be pulled out of the room by her superior. Like, what are you doing? Um, because she gets so emotional about Iris's of death. Of yeah. course. This is something she's been thinking about for 25 straight years. Yeah. And she feels guilty about it as well. Um, by the end of this episode, though, she does not trust Dexter nearly as much. So, Well, no. Because, obviously, we'll get the there. conversation she has yes. with Molly uh, turns... Turns her head in a different direction, for sure. Um, And, you know, I think this has definitely been done a few times where Dexter tries to rely on the police to basically stave his hand where Mm -hmm. he's like, come on, guys. You know, just do your job. Yeah, yeah, do your job. Don't make me kill this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Deb's there to be like, yeah, that's always fucking worked out so well. Uh, She starts bleeding from her wound, which Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, that happens a good amount. Like Mm -hmm. he just, you know, this is just this reoccurring guilt that he feels from the death of Deb. He just blames himself and he constantly replays her demise in his head and and sees it as his fault. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they go, and, and I like that Dexter lets her in on all he knows, outside of obviously mm-hmm. killing Matt. Um, he's like, all right, here's what happened. 
Mm-hmm. You know, even though Molly asked me to not tell you this, uh, this is what ended up taking place. Uh, and here's his secret cabin in the woods. Mm-hmm. Let me take you down into the place where uh, this room was. And when we get down there, it's totally barren, yeah. stripped clean. It looks so different too. It looks like it's, I mean, it looks abandoned, yeah. which it is. So yeah, all the evidence of it being that weird motel room setup is completely gone. Yeah. But everything's there still that proves what Dexter is saying mm. is true to me, right? Like the cord from the camera is still coming out of the wall. Like everything he talked about and everything he points towards makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also going to just kind of nip something uh, really quick because I could see people being like, how the hell did he, you know, take all that shit out of there by himself or his beds and this and that? Well, we know that he's about to pay some guy $5,000 for assistance. He gave yes. Harrison the letter. He is potentially abducting Dexter. We don't know. We'll see if, you know, we'll get there in a second. But, um, you know, he, he has this guy who he's paying to do his dirty work right yeah. now. I mean, if he's going to fucking, uh, you know, kidnap somebody, he's totally fine with whatever the fuck. So he would totally take apart somebody's murder room. Oh, for sure. Just throw that on, you know, on the bill. Yes. So. Yeah, he definitely had help with it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a believable, and realistic uh, situation. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and... As expected, Kurt, uh, Kurt, um, Audrey Mm. is afraid Uh, of Harrison. Harrison. Yeah. Which makes complete sense. I mean, he very clearly does the breaking of that kid's arm on purpose. And she witnesses it and it's, you know, it's messed up. So she's like, "Mm, I don't know if I want to see you as much right now. Which I can't blame her for. Yeah, and I mean, I had talked about how how the fuck can he not be suspended or expelled from school for what he did, but I had plenty of comments being like, oh no, like he wouldn't be, in fact, I don't even think he'd be suspended, this and that, and it's it's like, I watched that just like they all did. This kid's tapping out, and he puts his force down to purposely break his arm. This isn't like... It just broke because he was pulling it too hard in one direction and it was an accident and it looks like it was an accident. From what I saw, now I guess there's always the, you know, plausible deniability kind of bullshit sure. there. But the fact that they didn't even call him in, they didn't even talk to him about it. Maybe they did behind the scenes and we just need to skip over that. It's mm-hmm. not necessary. Who cares? But, oh my God, if I was like that kid's parent... And I saw him, like, my kid kept tapping out. And then I saw that guy go, mm, right. and break the... Oh, my yeah. God, dude. That, <laughs> he would get into a way worse fight than he <laughs> ever thought he was about to get into. Mm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, whatever. Harrison's work outfit mirrors Dexter's murder outfit here. I like which that is, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's cute. And, um, yeah, washing big rig trucks... Uh, in that freezing temperature with all that water all over you and everything. Whew. No fun. That would be horrible. <laughs> really rough job. Definitely terrible. I thought for sure the guy who gave Harrison the letter, they say his name, it's written on the check, I don't remember what it was, but whatever. Uh, that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought for sure he was going to try to molest mm-hmm. Harrison or like, you know, um, approach him like hey i got some extra money if you want to you know clean my undercarriage <laughs> <laughs> and yeah i thought that you know because appropriate sexually with him yeah because mm-hmm. you know harrison says to audrey like somebody tried to touch me at a bus station mm-hmm. and i you know i did something to them we don't know to what extent but i'm gonna assume <laughs> not you know he did a lot seeing yes. as how he just broke a kid's arm for no fucking reason i yeah. can't imagine somebody touching him um, and he put his other friend in the fucking hospital, you know, by, by cutting, you know, a, a, his fucking vein in his leg. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just thought for sure that, that this guy was going to try to do something to him. Think that he was a little male lot lizard mm-hmm. there. <laughs> and, um, 
and that he was going to freak out and kill him. And then he was going to have to call on Dexter like, oh, my Mm -hmm. God, Dad, I fucked up. I killed someone. Like, I need your help. And Dexter has to come and save the day. I thought that was going to happen. Yeah. And by the way, I, I, I knew of the term lot lizard. I did not. Before this show, because I had to research truck drivers and truck driver lingo to write the dialogue for my Bridge to Nowhere script. Mm. And so you found so. out about lot lizards. Sure did. I yeah. sat down and had an interview with a truck driver and everything wow. to write that script. Oh. Mm-hmm. Did he tell you about the lot lizards? No, but I, I wrote the dialogue and then I met with him to read it so he could tell me if it was a believable exchange between truck drivers and he said yes hmm very cool yeah Yeah. i learned all sorts of truck driver lingo like ols and ols yeah what's an ol it's an old lady and then your little ankle biters are your kids oh stuff like that (laughs) ankle biters (laughs) i like that one (laughs) but anyway um and let's see Kurt's arrested, as we had kind of talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, and right before that, he's confronting Dexter and basically letting him in on the fact that he knows something, mm-hmm. which we find out later in the episode, is that he knows that he killed his son. And he shows this by giving him the titanium... Nail rod? Rod. Thing? Yeah, there yeah. you go, rod. Um... That would have been in his in his hip or his leg, something in his yeah, leg. I want to say his, mm-hmm, his leg. An, an injury from that boat accident. Um, and Dexter's looking for the second piece because there's typically two. Uh, a question I definitely have, and and you had the last time, was where the fuck is this billionaire guy? Yeah, and. Was that just a straight up red herring to like divert attention away from Kurt? Like, oh, it's the billionaire. I never thought for a second it was the billionaire. I made that very clear since mm-hmm. the beginning of this season. And I'm not sure how he's ever going to play into this. I Maybe he will or maybe he's just gone, which would be or, really weird if he's just gone. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he'll be just gone, really. I feel yeah. like he might be... Uh, maybe popping up in these like later episodes. We got three episodes left. Yeah, but for you know, like the next season type of thing. I don't know if there will be one. Maybe. Well, I'm hopeful that there's one. Sure. So I don't know. It just seems weird that he would be completely cut out of the picture. Yeah. I do think he was meant to be a red herring of some type, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like he's the next level, like a serial killer, and something else is happening. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I mean, yeah, he could be the. The looming threat yes. um, for the second season. Maybe he's funding serial killers. Yeah. Right? Something he's like that. He's got a whole right? ring of them. And serial Dexter's got to take them out one by one. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I mean, Angela kind of breaks it off with Molly in this. But then they're like besties at the end of this. So it doesn't last yeah. very long. No. Um, and so there's not really much to discuss there. Mm-mm. Um, and okay. So this, this is really silly. Uh, Dexter goes out cause he wants to talk to Kurt in private, lets some sheep out, then just drives over to the police station, turns off the lights, walks in and just talks to Kurt dead on in the, ju- there's the police station's open. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I guess Dexter picked the locks. There's no active security cameras None. that are picking up any movement in right. there. If like you leave and there's a prisoner in there that someone might be breaking out. Yeah. You should have something to watch. There, there's no, there's nobody like manning the phones in case mm-hmm. somebody calls for an emergency because we know from this show that the calls come through the, like the dispatch mm-hmm. is there in the building so they don't have 24 hour dispatch. It's like call 911 yeah. between the hours of 9 and yeah. 5 otherwise we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. If you have any issues <laughs> past our hours, sorry. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, he just like leaves a murder suspect by the way this isn't some guy who was like drunk and disorder no this is a potential murder suspect which is a extremely high profile case because it, it if it's true he killed the sheriff's 
best friend who she's been dwelling on this thing for like 25 years. This would be the last person on earth you would want breaking out of there. Yeah. So the fact that he just is like, boop, there's some sheep on the loose. I better go fucking save them and leave this murderer unattended. I hope no one walks in the <laughs> old front door because those cameras have been down since July. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, what? It is very silly. I think I'm it's... assuming he took her keys Right? Yeah. And he knows where the cameras are, so he's slinking. But the fact that they don't even address it at all yeah, is, like, kind of just a slap in my face. A bit. Definitely think it's supposed to be kind of, like, small town, so their department isn't, like, super equipped, and that's why, you Nothing's know. Nothing's that small but town. But I, yeah, I, I agree <laughs> with you. I think it's really silly. Yeah. And should have been addressed in some way. Because, yeah, Dexter would have known, like, oh, there's a camera in that corner, and there's one over there, but if I walk this way, they won't see me, like... He would have understood all that, and that would have been pretty easy to do. I mean, if they have fucking surveillance drones and yes. stuff, they definitely have cameras in the police station. And just ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. That That's silly stuff. And we've mentioned other silly stuff, for sure. There's certain things where you just have to go, okay, yeah. it it's not happening a lot, mm-hmm. but the whole, you know... Batista thing. Mm. What, what's that kid's game again? Oh, that, like you the give a shit. Of it. It's yeah. so convenient. I get it. It's, it's to speed up the process of sure. like, you know he's going to tell her. Just let's tell her. Yeah. <laughs> but there's just a better way to write it. Yeah, where right? it's not so like forced and weird and unnatural. All it takes. All <laughs> it takes is, is Dexter having a little bit of an inner dialogue. Like mm-hmm. he always does. And he says... Good thing I stole my girlfriend's keys and know where the cameras are so that I can talk to Kurt in private. Two Perfect. second line. Yeah. Done. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'll be like, well, it's addressed. Yeah. Even if it's unbelievable, I don't care. It's addressed. The fact that he just walks into a police station with no one knowing because a guy had to run out for sheep. Yeah. Is just lazy. That's well, just lazy. Not, and also, he's already been caught on camera once. It was the cameras that he didn't know existed, right? Sure. So, like, you'd think he would be extra careful to yeah. not get caught on on tape. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Um. Now, do you think that Kurt actually? No, I think yes. I'm gonna say that up front because we have a piece of evidence that I think suggests as such, but. I would assume you're probably going to be with me here that Kurt's dad really did like to rough up lot lizards, prostitutes of the truck stop while he sat in the front seat listening to this record that he dances to the in the bar to. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, that's the song is my is evidence. That. Right. right. Is that he... Now, why he's getting like... I guess he connects that to romance. Like, that's his dad's sure. romance, right? Is, like, beating up women in the back of the truck as he, like, rapes them. <laughs> so romantic. Yeah, I mean, that might have been, like, one of his first, first exposure, you know, to sexuality and, sure. and all of that. And definitely when you're younger, that kind of stuff sticks with you. And, you know, there's definitely a theme. It did me. There's <laughs> definitely a theme in Dexter, too, with, like, the, you know, born in blood. So, sure. like... You know, traumatic born and raped. Born and raped. Traumatic things that happen to children in this show tend to make them into serial killers later on. Sure. So, yeah, I think that that is all accurate, and the song is definitely the strongest piece of evidence for it too. So. Right, because and another piece of evidence is is that in the visual flashbacks we get, we don't get lies. Right. Right. The story he tells does not match up with the reality. We see the reality. So his memories that he's flashing back on are definitely true. Right. They're not right? false. So why would he be fabricating that, right. but then not fabricating the other thing? Mm-hmm. So I think it's, yeah, it's 100% that mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened. So, I, as you said, sexuality, uh, his first embrace, his first experience with it. This is why he goes and listens to this song. It means something to him. But the fact that he needs someone to dance with is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he has a son... So he has been sexual, right? Because like when that girl starts taking her tits out, he's like, this is not what this is about, Mm -hmm. which would almost suggest like 
maybe this fucked him up to a place where he can't be sexual. Mm. Right? But he has a child. Now, granted, he could, you know, have married into that kid or he could have uh, donated a semen or, or something and it maybe not yeah or adopted yeah. Yeah. you know i don't know I, although i think they they're looking no they no that's not true they we know that they're related because she says they took a cheek oh, swab right. yeah. so he's not to, adopted. to match with him but, so he's definitely his child yeah i i don't know although I, he I, could I, be lying about that and it's like you know i'll give you the swab you ain't gonna find anything because he ain't my kid but sure. i think he's fucking you know, he, has, he had a wife, right? Yeah. I, so. I think that maybe there's like a... He kind of has this bubble around, you know, his serial killing where sure. it's not that for him. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, in other parts of his life that he didn't have sex. But what is it? I mean, we... we yeah. I had already surmised, I mean, I guessed that this was a recreation of Iris's death. Yes. I, I, I knew this was it basically from many episodes ago at this point. Um, but what I was wrong on is that they were romantic or any of that stuff. That mm. was nothing. She did not run out into the caves and there was a collapse. Like I had all sorts of different mm. thoughts mm. and none of those were accurate. Um, but her running away and him shooting her in the back was the accurate one. So broken clock, right? Twice a day. <laughs> um, we, we get that. So now he's what? He's because we're, we have hypothesized that he is preserving these corpses to keep in his house like Frank from freaking Maniac or... Um, Don't Go in the House. Uh, Donnie from yeah. Don't Go in the House. I almost blanked on his name and I was going to punch myself. <laughs> no way. Um, yeah. But yeah, I... I Preserve bodies. What do you think? I mean, I like that idea because I think it's really creepy and I don't know what else he's doing with the bodies other than just disposing of them in general, but... Yeah, you know, why would thought, he be trying to put her face together, right? Right, if he was that's just disposing, the thing. Right? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense that he would even take the time to reconstruct her face. Um, we thought, too, that he was like generally dumping the bodies in the caves, but they've only found Iris's body. Yeah, nothing so, else. I don't... But there is a bear in there, too. He's eating them. Yeah. Which is kind of what I thought. I mean... I think it's possible, but... Yeah. Well, there would just be no way to... I mean, there is, there would be a way. There could be, like, leftover bits, you know, that are found. Sure. Put it in. And then it's like, we don't know how many bodies. <laughs> because there's so many just random parts and pieces. I think he's throwing them down that well. Mm. That Dexter was, was going to throw... Matt's body down. Mm. Uh, it just makes sense to me that he would dispose of them in that, you know, in that cave because That's it's, where Iris is. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, sentimental to him, sure. so to speak. So I think they're in that cave, but how long does he have them before and why do they have to look like, why is he so pissed off when he shoots mm. one in the face and he's like, this isn't sexual. Like, what is it? It's a recreation of his first kill, but for what? Just Maybe. he wants to play it over and over again. So his dad was like raping these girls and, you know, being abusive towards them. But he gives them like money and then he takes them back yeah. to their place. He's putting them out of their misery. Well, like, yeah, he's like, I think maybe in his mind, he's like, I'm better than my dad. Like, I'm taking care of them and I'm not raping them. Yeah, and I'm like, saving them. Like, I'm giving them. them like, yeah, like this nice last night or whatever. <laughs> right? Like, which yeah. is maybe what, you know, happened with Iris. I'd rather be raped and live yeah. than fucking sure. <laughs> treated sure. really nice and then shot in the back. I'm just, yeah, trying to... I know, I, I get it. You're in the mind of a serial killer. There's no logic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah. He's thinks he's treating him better than daddy. Mm-hmm. Maybe. What do you guys think? <laughs> Always. Um, and we see that... Um, Trinity shown here in a flashback with Harrison. I don't know how old John Lithgow is now. And that season, season four of Dexter, must have been 15 years ago. Um, so, I don't know. Like, that was, that was old stock footage, right? It just looked like it kind of seamlessly blended. It did. With this visually. 
It might so, have been old footage, but it was new footage as far as like it hadn't been seen before, right? Because I don't remember. Was, I don't remember either. I don't remember it being like a point of view of Harrison. I'd have to go to that. It's the season so. finale of season four. Yeah. In the last like five minutes of the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in that area. If we ever see Trinity lean down and talk to Harrison for a second, I don't remember this. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, as I said, you're talking about fucking 15 years ago. Sure. So I'm not going to remember that specifically. Not one second of a scene that's kind of throwaway and mm -hmm. irrelevant in the moment. Um, now, is it possible that John Lithgow came back just for that quick cameo? I mean, it would be possible if he was going to have more to do later. Mm -hmm. Like, like if he keeps coming into Harrison's head in the, in the next few episodes, yes. Then yeah. obviously that's him reprising his role and, you know, haunting Harrison's mind. Um, but it, I don't know. It felt like it was new footage, but it probably wasn't. Mm. But if we see him more than it definitely was, anybody can confirm if or deny what it was. Uh, Trinity's footage. I, I'm curious on that one. So let us know. Um, and Harrison, of course, goes after these wrestlers as they confront him with a knife, mm -hmm. just showing yet again that he's fucked up. And this is when Dexter comes and, and stops him from going crazy on these guys. And we find out that Harrison believes that Dexter left. Because he is fucked up. Right. Because Harrison has always been uh, bad. <laughs> so... Yeah, Harrison doesn't think that Dexter left because Dexter's a serial killer and Dexter is a mm -hmm. fuck-up. He thinks that his dad left him because he's the fuck-up, um, which is really sad. Yes, it is. You know, because it's not the truth at all, um, but Harrison has made it his reality, yeah. so... Well, yeah. that's easy for him to believe. I mean, with the note and, you know, the dark passenger. Because he knows nothing about Dexter. He knows nothing yeah. about him. So he's like, oh, and then he has all those feelings himself of wanting to hurt people and having so much anger that, like, yeah, he's like, okay, this is why Dad left me. Um, it is super sad. And Dexter, I mean, he's like, we have to tell, like, he's like, I have to tell him. I have to tell him everything now because he wants to, you know, explain and make Harrison see that that wasn't the case. Yeah. So... I definitely think that's coming very soon. Um, I guess we'll see whether or not, you know, he's Dexter's been abducted or not and how quickly he gets out of that. But I think that there will be a reveal of uh, Dexter's past to Harrison, maybe even in the next episode if, you know, Dexter's not locked up for all of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I um... So Kurt doesn't have his kill room anymore to lock anybody in. But he could have other kill he rooms. He could have other, like another room in his house, yes. anything. So who knows with that. Um, I'm really 50-50 right now on if Dexter is going to actually be abducted. Mm -hmm. um, if he is, I think Harrison will be coming to his rescue. Yes, I agree. Um, if he isn't, I think Dexter is going to take Harrison along with him to kill Kurt. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. and try to expose him to Harrison so he can see Kurt for who he really is. And I think Kurt will show that to them by killing Molly. I still mm -hmm. think Molly is on the chopping block. She will be the, the, the last chick. Uh, maybe not the last chick, but the next chick that Kurt kills. Um, I also but, still feel like it could be Audrey in some ways. That, sure, absolutely. But I, yeah, I think that Molly is a very likely suspect, uh, just because she's you know the one that would go out looking for it. But I can I can see Audrey kind of like following Harrison. He just doesn't Dexter. have any reason to go after her much outside of the fact that the. I don't know. That just brings well, so much she is more Iris's attention. Daughter. Sure. So I feel that's what makes me um, think that she would be no. like a really. Prime... That's like the real recreation, right? Yes. So. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. But. But. 
I don't know. I also, like I said, can see Molly just because she's out. She would be out looking for it. She wants the story. Right. That's what I'm saying. So. She like exposes herself to it. She keeps putting herself out there yeah. for it. Yeah, you're good. That's a good point on on Audrey. Mm -hmm. Definitely possible. So, mm -hmm. or, or none of the above. Or none. Nothing like that happened. None of what we just said happened Dexter's at all. Dexter's just locked in a room for the rest of his life. Yeah, him and Harrison get into a real grueling match of dominoes. <laughs> it just never ends because they all just keep scoring like one point. Never per ending game. dominoes. <laughs> we just played dominoes today, and it just lasts like five hours. forever. <laughs> um. Anyway, so there you go, Dexter, uh, episode Dexter. seven, skin of her teeth. Uh, three episodes left. Yeah. Yeah. We shall see. I think Thank we uh, we guessed everything we, we could. Uh -huh. um, now, you know, Dexter's girlfriend here, she has this information from Molly. So she's looking into Dexter again, yes. right? She was suspicious of him. Then she needed to call on him for his forensic uh, expertise. And now she's back to like, is like, this, who a, is this yeah, guy is really? he an accomplice? Right. Um, like, why was he listening in on them? This and that. So now her eyes are, are purely fixated. So I could see her following Dexter, Dexter picking up Harrison, Dexter and Harrison following, you know, Kurt, mm -hmm. Kurt's following uh, Molly or Audrey, <laughs> Molly or Audrey. And or, everyone's just following each other. Yeah. Until and then Molly and Audrey are following Dexter's girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> Just a circle. <laughs> What's her name again? Wait, Dexter's girlfriend? Yeah. Angela? Angela, thank yeah. you. Kept blanking on it. <laughs> We're watching so much shit. Too many things. Too many <laughs> things, but names are just... <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, let us know. Adios. Bye.